spirit of our praise and worship and adoration. Come on, I just fill this place with worship. You are my God, my rock of my salvation. We give you praise. We give you worship this afternoon, Lord. We bring our hearts, O King of Glory. May you cleanse us, create in us a new heart that we may worship you, that we may lift you up. O God of Glory, we come against every obstacle, Lord, that will hinder us from your worship. We come against every obstacle that will take away our our attitude of worship. We bow before your throne. We worship you, O King of Glory, the mighty one of Zion, the one who was and is to come. You are our Lord. We worship. We worship. We worship.
Hallelujah. Can we give the Lord a round of applause? You are worthy, Lord. Can we give him a shout of praise? Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise be unto God. Can we clap our hands unto the Lord? Don't say there is not a friend like the Lord Jesus. Come and clap your hands for you people. Not a friend like the lowly Jesus. Come on, say. No, 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 Move, 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 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. I get answer. One more time. Come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Praise the Lord. Jesus, 
And the Lord has done it for you. Come on. Take it. Come on. Yeah. I know you may not have a testimony, but how will you dance when the Lord has done it? <laughs> yeah. One more time. appreciate him better because he's good. Amen. Amen. We give you glory to our Lord. Amen. We thank God because he gave his, his only son to die for us and we are grateful that Christ died for us. We thank you Lord. Oh God. My the highest king who welcomed me. I was lost, but he brought me all his love for me. All his love for me. Who the sun, who the sun says, oh, 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 he's free. As ransom, who is blessed? When I was a dancer to Jesus died for me, Jesus died for me. Who is blessed? Who is blessed?
just give him glory because he has given us grace to be called him God. Oh God, we love you.
find adoration of who you are. For Lord, you fashion us individually, every one of us, to experience the wonder of the cross, to experience how much you love us, to experience the promises that you have for us. And so, Lord, we pour out ourselves to you. Not that, Lord, we are perfect. But by the cross, we know that, Lord, we can count our blessings. We know, Lord, that you are making us perfect in you until Christ is formed in us. And so, Lord, our hearts are grateful this morning because you are risen. And all strongholds are brought down by the name of Jesus. And so we thank you for freeing us this morning. We thank you, Lord, that our hearts can find peace and hope that comes from you. That our hearts, Lord, can rest and assured that, Lord, you are with us. In the valley you are with us. In the mountain you are with us. And so Lord we focus not on ourselves. But on you who is the risen one. We thank you for our families. We thank you for our church. We thank you Lord for the ministry that goes on in this church. We pray Lord. That it shall be sacrifices before you. That you shall manifest yourself with power. Hearts are hungry for you. We pray, Lord, that the ministry of this church shall bring men to you. Because the cross, the blood of Jesus speaks of good things. And we are just but vessels before you. And so, Lord, we pour out ourselves. We allow ourselves. We give permission to ourselves, Lord, that your word, your word, Lord, may fashion us to whom you want us to be. Because you love us. Your word says that you loved us even before the foundations of this world. And we thank you, God. That you're calling us to honor you as you are. Church, take one minute just to thank God for who he is. Thank God for the benefits that we have. Oh my soul, thank God for the benefits that we have in Christ Jesus. That who are it not for the cross. The enemy would have swallowed us alive. But because of the cross, our stories are not yet done. Our stories are not yet done. Because God is fashioning us to be a people. To be a nation for him. To be a nation for him. Oh, we thank you this morning. We thank you because you have loved us. Let every mouth be silenced. And the work that you have in us, Lord, to continue reigning in power, Lord. Because we celebrate the resurrected King this morning. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Let's clap our hands and thank God for the cross. Amen. We can have our seats. Um, this morning, my name is Joy Tanti. I'm born again. I'm married to Evans Lukale. And we are blessed with two boys. And we thank God for the progress so far that he is taking us through. We are being led today by the Treasured Family Ministry. We are a big team, not just myself and my husband. There are others who 
may not be in the service today, uh, but we serve together to ensure that our programs in the family ministry, parenting couples, and even as we look at the church in general from the family ministry perspective, uh, is fruitful. And we want to mention that this week we may be releasing our workbook for the couples, um, a couples uh, workbook following the luncheon that we had in February, just to enable us in our maps to continue with the discussions and give us a, a, a more interactive time as we think about biblical commitment or biblical marriage commitment. So look forward to that, and we will be giving you more details on that. So we welcome you to our service today. We appreciate and welcome all our visitors. This is Grace Hill Mission Church, where God writes beautiful stories. Karibuni sana. Do we have visitors in our midst? You could raise your hand, and we can celebrate you. Yes, there is a visitor we have there. The ushers will attend to you. Thank you. We appreciate all who attended the AGM last Sunday. It was a great success because of you. There is a registration form at the ushers desk in case you had registered online but didn't make it physically. Please sign after the service for proper filing. The other announcement is on child dedication. We look forward to dedicate the children today and next Sunday. Parents are reminded to register their children for the dedication at the usher's desk. Regarding our prayer kesha, the prayer kesha has continued to give us a platform for us to pray together. Thank you for your commitment last Friday. A church that prays together grows together. The Easter mission season is here with us. Let us be reminded of the profound significance of this time in our faith journey. Easter is not only a time of reflection and celebration, but also a reminder to continue sharing the transform transformative message of Christ's death and resurrection with those around us and beyond. As Grace Hill Mission Church, we are called to impact communities around us and beyond. And with regard to that also, the mission and community outreach invites us for a time of sharing the gospel with our community. We will have a prayer walk, a child's concert, and a movie at Shauriako Village, reach out to students, one-on-one -on -one gospel sharing, and visitation. And this week from the 29th to 31st, um, the, the previous three days, we received the UON Kikuyu Campus Evangelism Team as they partner with us to share the gospel with the community. The prayer walk will be happening on the 6th of April from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. Together we serve. Tuzame, pressing on, wider. We want to worship through giving at this point. And remind you that our pay bill number is 135146. And you can indicate the type of giving as the account number. Offering, tithe, missions, or thanksgiving, and to my any basket. Um, and any other um, indicating the type of giving that you'd want. So we thank you and welcome the praise and worship team to help us with that session. Thank you very much.
worship you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We worship you for your goodness and mercy. Lord, we thank you because you've been gracious and kind to us. You've been so good to us. So we can sing, tell me the story of Jesus. Write on my heart every word. This is the story most precious. The sweetest story that I ever was heard. Oh, we worship you, Lord. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the empty tomb. Thank you because of your giving. Oh, dear Father, for you so loved us that you gave your only begotten son. Jesus poured out his life, his all. There was nothing more left that he could give. He gave himself withholding nothing. Would you help us, Lord, to respond to this giving by withholding nothing, giving of ourselves fully. And as we commit our offerings, our sacrifices to you today, we thank you because we can never outgive you, we can never give enough, just to say thank you for the cross. Thank you for loving us. But we come and give from what you have given us as worship. And may this worship be acceptable to you. May you bless the labors of our hands and teach us to be faithful with what you gave us in support of the work of the kingdom, in support of those who are needed around us, which indeed is also part of the work of the kingdom. We ask you, dear Lord, that we shall learn from you, that we shall give as you gave. We thank you because of our needs as a church, our needs as individuals. We trust you that you shall meet every one of them. You will provide for us. You will make a way for us. You will bless the labors of our hands. You will open doors for us. So we thank you for our giving. We thank you for this, our prayer in Jesus' name. Please remain standing. I want to uh, Let's give a heart of applause to our worship team again for our great work, great work, great work. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, put off my microphone so I can consult. Uh, We, we have missed out in the announcements uh, the worship experience that is part of our outreach next week. That's what I was consulting, uh, wondering why it's out of uh, the announcements, but uh, it was an oversight. So we have, uh, as part of our weekend, we'll have outreach this uh, uh, weekend. We, we are very grateful for the campus students. Uh, and those who joined them yesterday for the uh, Friday for the outreach, we thank God for that. Next, uh, this week we'll continue with outreach every day for as many as could be, uh, can be available uh, during the week. We'll have uh, every day, but because many of us would not be available on, uh, across the week, we will then meet on Saturday from 9 o'clock. We'll have time for prayer here. But also then we'll go out for witnessing and uh, prayer walk and other ministry activities that have been announced. I am trusting that uh, we'll have uh, a full church. And uh, I was told I was out of town. Uh, my wife was here for the uh, night of prayer, the, the, the have Kesha. And she was telling me, you are many. And uh, as we pray more and we have more people attending, let us have also more people coming to, uh, to be part of the outreach on Saturday. But then on Sunday again, after the service, we will then have uh, uh, a time of celebration. It would have been today. But uh, because many people travel and have other family things, we decided to move it by a week. And it is next Sunday. And that is for the whole, whole church, including Sunday school, including our children, 
let's have a moment of worship. Now we want to uh, receive two new members of the worship team. They have uh, completed their probationary period. Um, Caroline, you have uh, done very well in that song. Eh? That is very song. Let me tell you something about that song. I had a song book that I started writing in Form 2. All the songs we would sing. That was one of the songs. I can't remember the number, but it was song number something. But uh, the problem is, um, and by the way, I believed in myself so much that uh, the songs I had written, I also used to record myself. You know, you have the, 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 the ca radio cassettes. Eh? I had bought, uh, so I used to record myself. And I used to be annoyed that my relatives, when they were hearing the record, they were not clapping, they were happy. And I thought I'm the best singer. But that was one of my favorite songs. I don't know why when I read it, people say I have changed it, but uh, thank you. Great memories. So we want to receive two new members of the worship team. And uh, we are receiving uh, Caroline, whom I have uh, uh, just, uh, you have just seen uh, her. Yeah. That's uh, Caroline Kiruba. And then uh, we have our brother, uh, Moses Minor. Amen. Let, let, let's uh, amen. welcome to the team. Please come. We will uh, uh, pray for you. Pastor Kenga will be making the prayer as the rest of the church also receive you as we continue receiving uh, your, your ministry. God bless you. We are happy to have you. Let's lift up our hands as uh, we pray for you. Our Father and our God, as a church, we are grateful this morning that amidst us, Lord, you've uh, chosen Caroline and Moses to be a blessing to us through the giftings, mm. through the talents, through the call that you've put in their hearts. Yes. And so we thank you that, Lord, as they join public ministry to be a blessing to the body of Christ in Grace Hill and beyond through their talents and their calling, mm. we commend them to you we pray that indeed, God, they would be beneficiaries of your grace. Yes. We pray that indeed, my Father, as they give themselves and devote themselves to serve you fervently, oh God, that they will find strength in you. They will be renewed by you. Mm. They, would be, they would be enabled by you, oh God. Yes. We pray for your anointing upon their lives. We pray that indeed through song, as they tell the story of Jesus, that indeed my father, many would know and turn their lives to the Lord. Yes, we Lord. pray that indeed through their serving in this team, that my father, this team would, would experience growth and will experience your grace in the name of Jesus. And so we pray that my father, as they become part of our worship team, mm. that indeed the team will experience your goodness and your grace. And as they continue to serve us, we pray as a church that indeed, my Father, we are, we are ready and we are, we are accepting their ministry in mm. the name of Jesus. And so, Father, we commend them to you and to your power. And mm. as a church this morning, we pray that, my Father, may they be used of you in the name of Jesus Christ. And so, Father, we thank you and we praise you. Even as Moses and Carol are enjoying to serve us, mm. we pray that may your name alone Oh, God, receive the, the glory and the praise forever and ever. And these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you again. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And God bless you, team. Uh, we are proud of all of you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Uh, you may have your seats. I now want to, we have dedication of children. Uh, just, I think, uh, two. But if we have more, we'll be ready to receive them. But according to the registration, most of the children are being dedicated next Sunday. Uh, let me ask those who are being dedicated today uh, to come, as I ask the leaders also uh, to uh, come in front again. Uh, so we have uh, Hargreaves and uh, Christine. And then we have, uh, yes, uh, Boniface and Katie there. The rest will be uh, next week. Thank you. So I want to dedicate these uh, uh, children as we thank God for uh, the parents also. 
Later on, we'll also be praying for uh, this family, but I will mention that later. Uh, so, Father, we thank you for this dedication service. We are so grateful. Your word says that children are a reward from the Lord. Indeed, the fruit of the womb is a gift from you. And Lord Jesus Christ, we come to your presence in this dedication service. Following your scriptures, following the word of God, following the Bible. But Lord, we come to dedicate these children to you. Also to dedicate the parents that they may bring them up in the ways of the Lord. Your word says in Psalm 78 that the things we have heard and the things our fathers have told us, we will not hide them from our children, but we shall tell them to our children and to their children after them, so that they in turn may also tell them to their children, so that every generation may put its faith in God anew. And so, Lord, we believe that what we are doing here is passing on in a spiritual way through this dedication service. Also, we believe we are passing on the baton of the faith, the baton of the gospel. So we thank you, dear Lord. As we join together, we're going to uh, begin, pray for each of the children. And so let's begin with uh, the baby two. Please, parents, closer. This is not a very easy name <laughs> to say. Lord, if indeed you are not on our side when Jasira arrived many days before her EDD, if the Lord was not on her side mm. when she took months in Kejabi Hospital and many mm. watched over her, we would have been concerned. Yes, Lord. If the Lord was not on our side, indeed as a church we say, it would have been very difficult for mm. us as a family and for her griefs and Christine. Mm. But thank you because you came through this baby miraculously. An evidence that indeed the purposes of God in her life are indeed true. Some of these purposes, we cannot even perceive them. We cannot understand our Father, yes. but they are not hidden from heaven. And so we thank you because of causing us in your own grace to mm. hold this baby and dedicate her to you, O oh God. Mm. Indeed, we are so grateful that you took away pain and suffering. You provided when we had big bills in hospital. Mm. Oh, who could have done it apart from the Lord? Yes, Lord. And so as a church, we are full of thanksgiving. Yes. We say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank as you, you did Lord. it for this, our sisters, you did for us as a church. And so we thank you because the purposes of this girl shall not be thwarted. Mm. Thank you because you will not miss any of her minds. Yes. Thank you because of the purposes of God concerning her life shall be accomplished. Yes. And we say so as a church. Mm -hmm. Because indeed in our hands we hold a miracle. Yes. Her days will be full of grace. Mm. She will love you. Mm. She will be loved by people. Mm. Her parents will not miss anything to bring her up. Uh, be it love, be it financial provision. Mm. You'll do it for her, our Father. Yes. And so as a church, on this very day, mm. as she comes to church, we receive her to the community of faith mm. on your behalf. Yes. And again, we dedicate her to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So we Amen. thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Pastor. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. We thank God. Let's continue in prayer. And Father, once again, we bring to you baby Prince. 
into the house of the Lord. Yes, Lord. Indeed, you shall command that bring the children to me. Mm. And as Kendi and Bonfas bring this baby to the house of the Lord, Father, we receive this child as a congregation that meets at Togoto Grace Hill mm. in the name of the Father. Mm. Father, we declare that indeed Prince would live to the fullness of his life. Yes, Lord. We pray that indeed Prince would live to experience hell. He will live to live out the purposes of God for which he has been brought to this side of eternity. Mm. And Father, we pray that indeed Prince would not miss out uh, on good friends. We pray, my Father and God, that you connect him uh, with friends in their neighborhood, kids that will influence him for the kingdom of God. Yes, Lord. We pray that he studies, uh, Lord, his growth into, 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 young, uh, into a child, into my Father and God, young adulthood, and even my Father into maturity, mm. that you order his steps yes, in Lord. the name of Jesus Christ. Mm. I commend Kendi and Bonfast to you. Yes. As they parent this young one, my father, mm. I pray for the wisdom that comes from above. Mm. I declare that indeed, my father, the parents will find all they need. Yes. That my father and God, they may bring out this child in the fear of God. Mm. I pray that in the times when they will not know what to do, that indeed, my father, you will provide counsel from godly men and women. Mm. I pray that as they turn to the scriptures, that indeed, oh God, they would find solutions into parenting of this child. Mm. And so, Father, this morning, as a, as, a, as a congregation of believers, we dedicate this child in the name of the Father, yeah. of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 May the Lord bless you, Christine, and her griefs, Kedi, and uh, Boniface. And may these children grow in a place of grace and... Uh, um, harmony and strength. Yesterday I talked to some church members who, who, who are okay. they used to be church members they are no longer in the country and uh, so they were sharing with us some, some good news uh, they expect their firstborn and then uh, they told me that uh, they remember the sermon on their wedding and the prayer, the prayer that is part of, uh, uh, of, 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 the, of, of our, the process here, and that we prayed that their home may be a place of joy, a place of peace, and a fountain that will refresh many. And that's what we pray for these families too. Amen. Happy Easter. I, I was taught another word in the morning by... Pastor Akenga, and I don't know whether it's uh, from Western or he made it here because people from Western, I think they are better in some of these things. So, Aliniambia, because uh, uh, what, what to say? Niseme, amefufuka. Na nyinyi museme? Yeah? Amefufuka kwa kweli. Mumesikia? Mi nasema, amefufuka. Na nyinyi museme, amefufuka kwa kweli. Yeah? So maybe he made it in the morning or, he, or you made it here. <laughs> okay. I'm a fufuka. This is original. So you say with some energy. I'm a fufuka. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hard clap, shall we? Amen. In uh, one more week, we conclude the series, The Paradox of the Cross. And uh, today being the second last, We'll look at the second, the last three verses, which will still be looked at again by the minister for next Sunday. And uh, today we are looking at the paradox of biblical hope. And we have looked at very many paradoxes in, uh, uh, that, that surround the cross. And let's read Isaiah 53, verse 10 to 12. Because, and we begin verse 10, believing that you are very much aware of verse the, the, the verses before that. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin, he will see his offspring and prolong his days. And the will of the Lord will prosper in his heart. After he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied by 
his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many and he will bear their iniquities. Verse 12. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great and he will provide the spoils with the strong. He will divide the spoils with the strong. Because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with transgressors. For he bore the sin of many and made intercession for transgressors. Now, up to this point in this series that is that has run for five weeks already, we have seen many, ter many terms or many words and phrases that have been associated with the Messiah all the way from chapter 52, verse 13, where this series began, up to Isaiah chapter 53, verse 1 to 9, where we were last Sunday. Now, the terms associated with, uh, uh, the, terms associated with uh, the Messiah so far uh, seem to be quite, quite dark. You know, they seem to be, they seem to be quite dark. There are words like pain, sorrow, suffering, despised, rejected. In fact, some of these words are repeated more than once. Wounded, pierced, oppressed, afflicted, stripes, and by stripes, this, these are, you know, caning, the beatings, eh? crushed. A sheep led to the slaughter, punishment. He died like a criminal, judgment, death, and finally, grief. But suddenly, in verse 10, there is a church. There is a church. Now remember, as we've said, Isaiah prophesied this 750 years before the action of the crucifixion and the resurrection. And imagine you are trying to understand and following who is this suffering like this? Wow. A lot of pain, sorrow, rejected, beaten, wounded, pierced, oppressed, afflicted, slaughtered like a lamb, dying like a criminal. Finally, he is put in the grave. You are even told that he was put in the grave together with sinners and with the rich in his death. And then all of a sudden, the words church, you begin wondering what has just happened. Did we not just read that he is actually in the grave? How then do we read such words like he will see his offspring? How can you see when you are already in the grave? We read words like satisfaction. How can you be satisfied when you are in the grave? How can you see the light of life when you are in the grave? How can you prolong your days when you are in the grave? How can you prosper? Because these are the words we read. How can you share the spoils with the strong? How? You see, there is such a sudden change that without really understanding, what is happening, now you begin to understand why the Bible says that even angels long to look at these things. They don't understand them. And that the prophets of all inquired within them, trying to understand what manner of things and times the spirit within them was speaking about. This is the old, the understanding of man. Because resurrection is not part of what is natural. But why there is a change is because there is, where there was death, now there is life. Now this change of the words reminds us that resurrection changes the story. Now we say here that God writes, a beautiful, God writes beautiful stories. The resurrection yeah, power of the Lord Jesus Christ Write beautiful stories. It changes the story. Where there is death, where there is suffering, where there is pain, 
then we read of victory and hope. And so today we talk about hope. The hope of the resurrection. First Peter chapter 1 verse 3. He says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Now, are you born again? Are you born again? I believe most of us will say yes, isn't it? Now the question is, what are you born again into? Many of us know what you are born again from. That you are born again from the ways, from the past ways of sin, from the dead works of sin. But now we are told we are born into a living hope through the resurrection of Christ our Lord. Now I want us to, from the scriptures then that we have read, to consider the character of this living hope. The work of this living hope. The expression of this living hope in our, uh, in our lives. And so number one, the resurrection offers hope in our seasons of trials. Because in this world you will have trouble, Jesus said. But fear not, for I have overcome the world. Because in this world there will be trials. In this world there will be days that are sunny and there will be days that are rainy. There will be nights and there will be, and, and there will be, there will be light. Now when we go through the valley of the shadow of death, when we go through seasons that are not too palatable, the resurrection of Christ reminds us that this is not final. It offers hope in our seasons of trial. The Bible says concerning the Christ, after he has suffered, he will see the light of life. Now you can see in one sentence, when you talk about after he has suffered, it should be, he will be pained, he will be angry, he will be finished, he will be dead. But after he has suffered, what comes out? He will see the light of life. This is a reference to the resurrection. It's a reference to the resurrection. In other words, the resurrection reminds us that even in the darkest trial, that God provides a way out. He makes a way. Blessed be the name of Jesus. He provides a way. Now, one of the hardest part for me as a pastor, as I conduct funerals, one of the hardest parts is the part of the grief. We call it the committal. And people can hold strong. You know, people can hold strong and read their tributes. But it is when we go to the grave, at that moment, when the finality of it all, you know, faces us. As we say, it is time for the family to throw in the cross, uh, the, 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 the soil, and people break down. And we've all been there, have been there. And that's when the breakdown comes. Why? Because the grave speaks finality. The grave is a full stop. You know, I cannot see this person again. I cannot even see their dead body again. It is final. And yet, according to the Bible, there is a power that teaches us and reminds us. When I go through experiences that seem as if I am going through the valley of the shadow of death, when I seem as if I am right inside the grave, even there my God makes a way. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Where there is no way, where there is no way, I come from a place where graves were extremely uncommon. In most homesteads, including my own and all my neighbors, there was never a single grave, not a single one. And uh, because our parents were the first settlers of uh, the land, uh, you know, from, there were no other people there. And so, death, you know, um, 
graves have only come now that our parents have aged. You know, maybe from the last 10 years. Really, there were no graves. But when I was in, form, I mean, in class four, a boy fell from a tree and he didn't survive. And it's a boy we knew who were in the same class. And for me, I used to fall out of trees. No, it was no more for me to fall out of trees. In fact, in short, shortly after, I actually fall, fell out of a tree and I almost jumped from a tree because I was being stung by bees, which I went to disturb up there. But then when I remembered the boy and what I saw, and I, I just decided I'll, I'll, I'll let the bees sting me, I'll come down slowly, I'm not going to fall from this tree. Because we really discussed. Remember, it was a new experience for all of us. Who was saying, hey, hey, did you see the way he was buried? He can't come back. Even if he resurrects, you know, the preacher said that people resurrect. That one, even if he resurrects, God. They covered him with soil. Then they put, they even planted things on top. The boy is not coming back. It was a very sad time for us. Because the grave speaks finality. And there are those times when we, and, and I'll be talking about the fact that the grave is not final later on. But for now, I am using the grave as an analogy because it is so, even in scripture. I'm using the grave as an analogy. Listen to what the Bible says. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. It says, no temptation has seized you except what is common to, to man. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand up at a rate. In other words, that time when you feel like you are on all sides, there is no hope. God knows how to provide a way out. Now, the Bible says in Psalms chapter 30 and verse 5, it says, For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may last through the night, but joy comes in the morning. Now, you know why? This scripture, uh, there is that contrast there. His anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Because it is important for us to be reminded. Because sometimes when you are going through times of sorrow, they seem as if they will last forever. Three days in the grave is like an eternity. It doesn't seem like it will ever come to an end. When you are going through a season of pain, when you are going through a season of trials, it doesn't seem as if it can ever come to an end. But we are reminded, there is a God who knows how to make a way out. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And when joy comes, his favor lasts a lifetime. So therefore, the cross, the, the, the empty tomb is also a reminder of the healing power of God. That when you go to the grave, the grave is about death. The grave is about decay. The, grow, the, 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 the grave is about brokenness. But yet, while we are reminded this favor lasts a lifetime, is because that same God who allows us to go into the grave is the same God who heals our wounds. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Sometimes when you are going through difficult times, it appears like it will never end. It's like a toothache in the night. Yeah? The night appears to be three times longer. But you know it is still the same night. And the morning will still come and the dentist will still be there. But when we are going through pain, sometimes it's easy to even throw up of our hands and say, God doesn't care. But it's a reminder, the joy comes in the morning. I like the song we say, we sang, what was impossible, you made it possible in your own special way. 
Yeah. Because we cannot explain the resurrection. We cannot explain how God makes a way. We cannot explain how God heals us. We cannot explain how God brings hope where there seems to be no hope. We cannot explain. But the Lord makes a way. Secondly, the resurrection reminds us that there is fruit in our pain and our anguish. That is the fruit of hope. When you stand and wait on the, in the, wait on the Lord, and you, when weeping may endure us in the night, yeah, and you persevere and go through it, that there is a fruit that comes from that. The resurrection reminds us of the fruit of hope. As we come out of the grave of trials, we we'll realize that our character is weak. Give us the scripture again of uh, Isaiah 53. And let's read again, verse 10. 10. Yet the Lord, it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin, uh, you can see the contrast. That's, just, that's, that's the paradoxes. He will see his offspring and prolong his days, and the will of the Lord will prosper. Look at verse 11. After he has suffered, or oh, give us the New King James Version. All right. He shall see the labor of his soul and shall be satisfied. This one explains it uh, more clearly. Yeah? He shall see the labor. One of the versions says he shall see the labor of, uh, of the travel of his soul. The labor and shall be satisfied. You know, the only way that um, when we talk about he shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied, the only way that can be is through the power of the resurrection. Listen to the Bible. Romans chapter 5, verse 3 to 5. We rejoice in our sufferings, knowing, but let's just pause there. It says we rejoice in our suffering. That's the paradox of biblical hope. Is it normal to rejoice in your sufferings? You know, it's not like we are crazy. That we can say, hey, I'm happy, I'm, hey, I am feeling good, I am suffering. Yeah? It's not like uh, some university students I had praying. You have heard me say this. I was invited to be among them. They were doing what they call their annual mission. And so I was there doing their crusade. So I had one of them say, bring it on, devil. Bring it on. Bring it on. Yeah. Do your worst, devil. Do your worst. Yeah. I dare you. Bring your best, what you have. <laughs> this guy should be the preacher. I don't even <laughs> coming here. Yeah. No, we are not that kind of people that we can tell. That Jesus taught us to pray, lead us not to temptation, and deliver us from the evil. It is not like we enjoy evil. Yeah. But you know, listen to that verse again. Maybe you have read it many times, but I want you to listen very carefully. We rejoice in our sufferings knowing. In other words, we rejoice in our sufferings because we know. The only way you can be able to be thankful in hours of trial, the only way you can be able to go through your three days in the grave, the time of the cross and death and the grave, it is only because you know, all right, that there is something beyond the suffering. There is something beyond the pain. There is an outworking that is happening that is beyond the pain that you are going through. So we rejoice because we know the suffering, uh, our suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and character um, produces hope and hope does not put us to shame. So please remember, one of the reasons, one of the reminders of the resurrection is that those moments when we are going through the valley of the shadow of death, Remember that there is a promise that at the end he shall prepare for you a table in the presence of your enemies. Hallelujah. Yes, he will. We rejoice because we know 
That's why we allow and submit ourselves to the working of the Holy Spirit, to the, to the porter, that he can mold us and work out hope in us. This hope does not put us to shame. But we, not only, we are not only reminded by the resurrection about this fruit of hope that is the character that God forms in us in the way of going through trials, but also in our lifestyle, the way we live. The resurrection power gives us the capacity to live a new resurrected life. In other words, the old is gone. Now, since, brothers and sisters, we have received such a great resurrection, such a great salvation, what manner of life ought we to live? Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 to 10, gives us a very clear explanation. It says this. Remember, this is the day we are celebrating the resurrection Sunday, isn't it? You know, as we read this verse, let me say this. You see, it is very easy for us to sing songs about the cross. Musalaba dio asilia mema. And we can get deep thinking about the way Jesus suffered. We can be touched by the cross of Jesus. But you know where the rubber meets the road? When the cross becomes yours. When you are told, take up the cross and follow me. When you are now not thinking about Jesus hanging on the cross. It is you and Jesus. It is you dying on that cross. In the same way. Resurrection, the resurrection story can just, be, um, can, can just be some abstract terms that you have heard since you are in Sunday school. Yeah. Oh, the, 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 the tomb was empty. So he resurrected. But how do you participate in the resurrection today? Because there is a resurrection that is coming. I'll talk about that as the last point. But how do you participate in this life? Because the Bible says that the power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead will give life to our mortal bodies. There is a working of the resurrection power in this life. So the Bible says, since you have been raised with the Christ, this resurrection day that we are celebrating, the question is, are you celebrating your resurrection? Because some people are, you know, they, 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 they resurrected but they they died, but now back to sin. Is it your resurrection that you also celebrate? Now that you have been raised with Christ, can you say on the resurrection morning that as he was raised, I have been raised with him? Blessed be the name of Jesus. So what is the evidence that I have been raised with him? Set your hearts on things above. Fix your mind on things above, not on earthly things. For you died. Now the question is, did you die? And when you died, did you remain dead? Yeah. Yeah. You know, one of the well-known Matthias of the faith, and he was sentenced by the Catholic Church to die at the stakes by burning. And um, he told his, you know, the people that were believers and they would be witnessing this. If you see any part of me trying to run away from the fire, please hit it because it will mean it is alive. Yeah? I want to go there crucified. Yeah? And I want to endure this cross, this fire, crucified. And because I fear my hearts, they can try to untie me. I fear my legs, they can try to run away. I ask the Lord to help that my heart and my feet will burn fast. Because I want to go there dead. So for you died, did I? And your life is now hidden in, with Christ in God. Verse 5, we cannot read all of the verses. Put to death therefore, because the Paul recognizes 
that some of these things come back to life. Remember, he is not writing to non-believers. If he was writing to non-believers, you would have told them, repent and be saved. But he is writing to Colossian believers. And he is telling them, put to death, therefore. And he reminds them the things that have been to be put to death. In other words, you have to have your good Friday every other day. You have to put to death, then so that you can also say, I have risen with Christ. What are you putting to death? Whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, yeah? Impurity, the word impurity is also the word fuel. It is a very wide word. I know sometimes when we think of uh, sexual immorality, it's easy to understand. You, you know what it means. But then you can also be able to watch a soap or a TV program, but then you laugh at their immoral jokes. You enjoy when they speak, when they, when they speak in ways that don't glorify God. That is impurity. You are not just being called to put to death sexual immorality, but every other form of impurity. Put to death, lust. And you wonder what is the difference between sexual immorality and lust. Because lust is not just about sexual immorality. We lust after power. Yeah? We lust after a good name. We lust after recognition. We lust after many things. Put to death. This is the Easter weekend. What a great reminder from the Holy Spirit through his word. Put to death evil desires and put to death greed. You know greed? Somebody told me uh, a few days ago, told me, you know, I've been having a lot of problems with my finances. And I want you to pray with me because I think there is an altar that has been set up by the devil. To destroy my finances. There is an altar. Well, I don't want to bring the theology of altars and everything about that. But this is the point. The point is, I told the person, read your Bible. What you are dealing from, what you are suffering from is called greed. So in other words, if there is an altar in your life, just call it greed. Let's agree there is an altar. But uh, let's know the altar then we are breaking. Because I was asking the person, where, 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 how do you think this altar comes about? He says, you know, people can get your money and they, and, and, and they can just decide, uh, you know, like for example, you can uh, go to a supermarket and they, somebody looks at you and does not like you. He looks at your money and then he decides he's going to put an altar on your money. So you don't know what is happening with your money. I said, no, the problem is greed. And we'll be free. If we put to death these things. But put to death anger. You know anger is a common denominator. If you are here, you don't ever get angry. Then you, you are really dead. <laughs> the real one, not even the one we are talking about here. Yeah, because we all get angry. But you see the Bible says, do not allow the sun to go down. When you are still holding on to your anger, put it to death. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Then there is rage. What's the difference? You know, I was in the Swahili service who were confused because it was saying, Hasira na gadabu. Sasa he raged your gadabu. Mwachana na gadabu. Lying. Then it says, since you have taken off the old self and put on the new self, which is being renewed into the likeness of the creator. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Finally, so we say, first of all, we are reminded by the cross that in every season of trial, God makes a way. In every wounding of the soul, God provides healing. Blessed be the name of Jesus. He provides healing. And so that when the night is full of weeping, we can have hope because we know in the morning joy will come. Because our God knows the way around the grave. He will make a way. 
Secondly, that the resurrection reminds us there is a power, okay, that transforms our lives to live in the hope of Christ and in the character of Christ. It helps us to submit to the porter so that when I go through trials and difficult times, I allow him to shape me because at the end there is a fruit and the fruit is hope. Yeah? But I also am reminded that this is a, a reminder that I can die every day. I put to death every day because I have risen with Christ. Blessed be the name of Jesus. So that my life shall be a reflection of the risen Christ. Hallelujah. And you know that's a daily thing, eh? Never get to a place and you tell yourself, ah, me, I am so dead. There is no way the devil can fight me. He means mauti, katika Christ. It doesn't work like that. You have to keep putting to death every day. But finally, brothers and sisters, the resurrection reminds us of our eternal hope. Yeah. After he suffered, he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. Verse 11. You see, our faith is anchored on our hope in a risen Christ, not in a dead Christ. In a risen Christ. In fact, that is basically what salvation is all about, what Christianity really is all about. That is it. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 17 to 19, if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. You know, I know that uh, simply by being in Christ, I have been saved from a lot of evil, isn't it? Yeah, I've been saved from a lot of evil. But yet, if that was the only thing, then I am to be most pitied. Think about all the sacrifices that you make because you are a believer. Yeah? One time, many years ago, I took my car to the garage. It was old and rickety. And uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't let it go, number one, because it had a loan, which uh, we, we, we were unable to pay. Number two, because uh, uh, we had no money to buy another. You know? So, Mpaka, one time my... my um, Mechanic asked me, what is, it a tick? is it a tick? You know, a tick is uh, an, uh, something that hides, bites animals, and then when it bites, it sticks. You know, that's what he asked me. But then, uh, one day, I was there, and somebody brought a, a huge car, you know, and you can be sure these days, these days you don't see big cars, Prados, what have you, because there are many, you know, there are many. Ata Muriskia, another pastor who was on the news fighting with his elders to buy him a, a, a Prado. He was saying, when I go with the harrier you bought me, when I pack it among men of God, it gets lost. You cannot see it, you know? Uh, so, so, so um, but those days, you notice such a car. Yeah? They, they were for MPs and NGOs and all that. This guy comes in such a car. Then, only to realize he was my classmate in campus. We one of my friends here, James. He was my classmate. And he is one of those boys had, we had a problem with. One day I had a big problem with him. Because he had brought, he had given, he had uh, cost a CU member to not go and sleep elsewhere. I don't know how to give those stories. Because he had brought a girl. So he had given somebody exile. And so then I'm, I'm the CU chair. I am told this brother is sleeping in my place because he, two days he has not slept in his room. Those were the days, my friend. I said, what do you... I went to the room myself. I just went and knocked. And I said, so he came out. I will not tell you his name. Now, he looked at me. And I told him, my friend, you don't do this one to, to a Christian Union member, a child of God. You are messing up your life. He was so rude. I looked as if he would fight me. I told him, my friend, today, 
I am going to make sure the vice chancellor, of course I had no power. No, I'm going to make sure the vice chancellor knows this. But I'm going to begin with the janitor. That is the one who is going to be sacked. <laughs> the guy began trebling. You know, just began trebling. And within a few, a few, an hour, less than an hour, our brother was back to the room. And the guy hated me. Now he is the one who has come with a big car. And my car is so pitiable here. How do you explain that, my friend? And he mocked me in the hearing of my mechanics. He asked me, oh, he, 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 whom are you helping? <laughs> my, I'm an idiot, I'm an idiot, I'm an workers. He's the one for your workers. And he mocks me, he mocks me. You know, because he wants me to remember the pain I caused him. Then he drives out, I'm left there. My friend, if only in this life, my hope is preaching to you. I mean, poor me. If all the sacrifices we make are for this life, we are to be pitied. You see, there's a problem. We are, we are taking heaven out of the equation of our faith. A lot. Even the hymns of old, sometimes we sing them, we don't want to go, well, you know, up to, you know, when this... When, I, when I, I lie in death, we want to remove that path. We sing up to the second last verse. Because they went all the way to death and to heaven. When we've been there 10,000 years. Yeah? And that is why we are not able to, save, to face pain. We are not looking forward to heaven. I took some uh, people here uh, to a conference. You are so angry with me. Said, Pastor, you always take us to good places, but we are not coming tomorrow. Who is it? Where did you bring us? The only thing that made sense was your sermon. Because the, the, the preacher, and I think they had a tunnel vision. It, one preacher is the one who had annoyed them. Because he said, Tim Nasema, you are going to heaven. Which heaven? Have you been there, preacher, so that you tell people you are taking people to heaven? Do you know whether it is east or west? Yeah? Heaven, heaven, you are going there. Where? Hey, so my people here at KK you are telling me, we are not coming, even you, we cannot follow you if you are not taking us to heaven. No, 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 no. Let's close with Job chapter 19, verse 25 to 27. The reason, there are many scriptures about the resurrection, but the reason that I want you to, I want us, I say, not there. That one is for the other side next year. Now, um, so, Christian hope sees beyond the brokenness of the present world and looks beyond to a better future. You know, the reason I bring Job is because you know, Job was at the death, at the door of death. He was suffering. In fact, he was at a place he was saying, I wish I can die. I want to die. Job chapter 19, verse 25 to 27. In that moment of pain and anguish, when he is facing day, de death daily and the mocking of his friends, when he is so unsure, in, by the help of the Holy Spirit, he utters these words. I know my Redeemer lives and that in the end he was stirred on the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, this one, after it has been put to the ground and it has started to rot away. It has rotted away. Yet in my flesh I will see you. That is faith in the resurrection, okay? I will have another body. I don't know what it will look like. I myself will see him with my own eyes. I and not another. That is the greatest hope, my friends. In fact, I will say our greatest hope is not that there is life after death. Our greatest hope is that we shall live with Christ forever. Blessed be the name of Jesus. That's the hope of eternity. That is the hope of the resurrection. That he was stirred on the earth. Blessed be the name of Jesus. We are not going to heaven because there are streets of gold. We are not going to heaven because there are mansions. Now we are not going to heaven because there is a river. We are going to heaven because Christ is there. I may not know whether heaven is this way or that way 
follow that way. But I know where he is, there I shall be. And that is enough. That is enough. That is the hope of the resurrection. That's the hope of the resurrection. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Let me tell you. As I also do this. You can remove the other slides. Let me tell you this. You know, if in your life as you serve the Lord, you miss the vision of heaven as the reason why you are living, then you will settle for mundane things. Yeah. Yeah. You, you become manipulatable. You become greedy. You are... Your salvation will never give you the fullness of joy. You see, the disciples came rejoicing. Hey! Even the demons are obedient to you. But Jesus put them in the right perspective. Rejoice rather that your names are written in the book of life. Rejoice rather that you have a place in the presence of the Father. That is what we are being reminded this resurrection day. In the name of Jesus. Let's give the Lord a heart clap as we also stand up in Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. Worship team. Oh, you have come back. I was telling them how oh, I took you to a meeting where you are told there is no heaven. And you said you are not coming back. Now, remember, the resurrection is a reminder that in every valley of the shadow of death, the power of the resurrection reminds us that on the other side, there is hope. Yeah. The Lord heals the Lord restores. Joy comes in the morning. Joy comes in the morning. And perhaps some of us are right there in that valley. And this is a great reminder on this resurrection day or celebration of the resurrection. That indeed, you know, Paul told the Ephesians in Ephesians chapter 1, from verse 18, I keep praying that the Lord may give you power to comprehend the hope and also the power to which you are called. Then he says this power is the exact same power that God exerted when he raised Christ from the dead. That's the power that works in us. Blessed be the name of Jesus. That's the power that works in us. And I want you to know that in every season, we are more than conquerors because of the power of the cross. And that this, we will live a life that demonstrates the character of the risen Christ because of that resurrection power that works in us. It is not by might, it is not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. All my struggles, I lay them at the foot of the cross. The last of the flesh. I put to death all the works of the flesh. But I rejoice, Lord, that even as I do this and I fight this good fight, that at the end of it all, I will be able to say like Paul, that there is a crown that is laid up for me because I have fought the good fight and finished the race. That's our greatest hope. That we shall hear that welcome in your presence. Welcome good and faithful servant. Help us. Help us. Never to forget. Our destination. Our goal. Heavenward. We press on towards the goal. Towards the prize. Heavenward. That we have been called. Father we thank you. I want us to make a confession uh, Wastahili that's um, 
And that will be our conclusion. Let's make that prayer. If you can, you can lift up your hands. Let's make that confession. Thank you, Lord. Was the hilly boy? Was the hilly boy? Was Let's make that confession. I am free. That is the meaning of Easter. That is the meaning of Easter. You left your place in glory.
never became, become common to us. May we never get used to it. May we never get used to Calvary. May it never be a mere religious symbol. May the empty tomb never be a simple religious slogan. But, oh Lord, may it be an invitation to see you and experience you in the fullness of your power and of your glory. To experience the fullness of hope. What a joy to be reminded by your word that the same power that raised Christ from the dead is at work in us. But Lord, we miss it. We walk in defeat. We walk in fear. We walk way below our potential. Forgive us, Lord. Because the cross is the release of all the power of God. The cross and the empty tomb are the disposal of them that believe you. That we live in hope. Forgive us where our lives have not, have not reflected the image of the risen Christ. Because you have given us through the cross, through the empty tomb, all that we need for life and for godliness. All that we need to live exactly like you. Lord God Almighty, where we are stuck, stuck in our dreams, stuck in our walk with you, stuck in our fears, may the resurrection power work in us to bring freedom. That this same fullness of potential shall be realized in our character, in our ministry, in our obedience to you. Lord, remind us, this world is not our home. This world is not our home. That we look forward to a better country whose foundations are Christ himself. We look forward to the second coming. We look forward to living with you forever. If that is not our daily cry, I pray that you would help us to retrace our steps so that that will be the reason why we believe that all our efforts must be towards eternity. Pointing people to eternity. Preparing ourselves for eternity. Lord God Almighty, this world is too temporal. Its joys, its givings, its pleasures are fading away. May this day when we celebrate the resurrection be a reminder that we have a better hope. An eternal hope. In Jesus' name. Allow me... Amen. Let's celebrate the Lord. Allow me to uh, invite uh, uh, the Gadogos uh, here and also to invite uh, Boniface and Kedi, their baby here. Um, now, Joyce and uh, Frank have been uh, uh, very faithful for many years, serving among us, uh, family ministry and other ministries also. They have served in uh, different areas of ministry. And for some time, when this journey began, it's quite some time, when they started looking for opportunities to uh, work uh, out of the country, and uh, it's been... It's been a, a journey from when we started have, having that conversation, Frank. Eh? But the Lord has come through for them. Uh, and our brother, where is the mic? Our brother will be 
um, uh, living fast and uh, I am being told to borrow from here. He will tell us where he is going uh, and then how, after how long ili tukiona Joyce hapa tusimulizo unafanya wapi na tuliwaombea sade. Yes, so in a minute. Okay, praise God church. Uh, my name is Gagogo and uh, we are grateful uh, that the Lord has opened the door for us as a family uh, to work outside the country. So I uh, will be traveling uh, this Thursday and then um, so I'm going for an orientation uh, for like a month or so and then I move to my workplace. Uh, Joyce and, and the children will be traveling uh, in June. June 24th, Pastor. June 24th? Yes, Pastor. We'll pray for them again. Yes. So, <laughs> so June 24th, if, if you see Joyce here around, please just her. So where are you going? Just yeah, yes. outside so, the country, country yes, so, Uganda. So we are going to the U.S., uh, a state called Virginia. That is where I'll be working. All right. You know our brother is uh, in the medical field, and so that's what he's going to do. Uh, Joyce, you will talk to us later. Wewe uko. Wewe uko. Yeah? On June 24th. Now, many of you may not know Boniface, but I know he's uh, been very, uh, very involved in the missions and all that, so he's not new. And they did not join us too long ago. They joined us from... Uh, Grace Hill, Kobo, and uh, they came here for, um, he was, uh, uh, because uh, uh, Boniface came to do some work, some ministry here, and so Kedi resigned, she's a good wife, and followed uh, uh, the husband, and uh, they have been here in the mission, in the children's, in the, the youth ministry, the a student's ministry, and also in worship team. Now, no, no sooner had he joined <laughs> the worship team than you released him. Uh, our pastor, our pastor, uh, our pastor uh, Kirogara, Grace Hill uh, Mission Church, uh, requested him, and he also did call me, to, to go back and uh, serve in the church. And so we pray for God to give grace, God to give resources. I'm also aware, Kedi, that uh, you are going to plug in right into work. Eh? That's the way the Lord, uh, the Lord works. That's a, very, that's a very great miracle. So, uh, Boniface, you can say a word, and then I'll invite the leaders. Yeah. And we can also hear Kedi, because joy, 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 joy. So, they, they leave this week, and uh, so... They will be at Grace Hill and Kobo, where they also, he was still serving there before he left. Hello, church. Praise the Lord again. Amen. Yes, my name is Boniface Kimadi, and uh, this is my big family. <laughs> uh, we thank God for the opportunity we have been here, and we also still thank God for the opportunity to go back to uh, Kobo to continue serving there. We are leaving tomorrow. And uh, God allowing us, we're going to be together uh, in, in the future, granting us an opportunity. But we are going there, and may God bless us all. Thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. I'm Katie. I'm a Mrs. Bonfis Kimadi. I'm born again, and I thank God for this, uh, this day. This is my first day to come to church after getting this blessing, and I'm so happy. Uh, we are going back to Nkobo, and we will miss you people. Uh, we have rejoined our stay here, and may the Lord bless you. Amen. Yeah. Uh, KD is also in the, medical, uh, in, in the medical field, just like uh, Gadogo. I think they are the ones who plug in right in, uh, but we thank God for that. Let me ask the leaders, to, well, they will not kneel because of the children, uh, we will pray for them as they as they start. We will break the we break the, the norms. Now, Pastor James, uh, the, Pastor uh, uh, Elders, we start with them and pastors. Yeah, Pastor James will be leading us in this prayer, and uh, we will also bless the congregation as uh, we 
Yes. So this is uh, Frank and Joyce. This is um, Boneface and KD. Right. And their children are here. Hallelujah. Let's lift up our hands towards heaven and towards these God's people. Oh, we thank you. The path of a good man is yeah. ordered by God. Mm. Father, we want to believe you are involved in the lives of these, your servants. You are the good shepherd. As David said, the Lord is my shepherd. You're the one instructing. You're the one leading. You're the one guiding. It's not in vain that this family is relocating. Oh God, we know you love the United States. And Lord, you are raising men that will be a blessing to that lad that has been such an incredible blessing to the nations of the world, but currently invaded by forces of darkness and wickedness. You are sending these men not just to go and work, but you are sending them as missionaries in that lad. And Father, we consecrate them. We commit this man in particular into your hands that you anoint him for this assignment, that wherever he go, heaven will stamp the words that he speak in the name of Jesus, that the Holy Spirit will come upon him in a new dimension. He will experience God more than ever in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for the platform that you have created. So, Lord, as they prepare, oh God, we raise them into your hands. Go ahead of them. Let the angels of the Lord go ahead of them. Let the favor of God forever surround them. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, that you are going to prepare the assembly, the congregation that will be receiving them. You will raise men around them in the name of Jesus Christ. So that this accountability will remain. That they will be part of a dynamic fellowship in Jesus' mighty name. We declare, Gadogos, you will be and you will remain a well-watered garden. Heavens will be open upon you and you will be a blessing wherever you go. That nothing will draw you away from the Lord. You will draw closer and closer to your God. You are blessed beyond any curse. Your family is blessed. Your marriage is blessed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for this family, oh God, that you have also ordained and you are sending them to Nkobo. And we release them with a lot of love. You sent them here for a purpose. And Father, we know there is something you have done for their lives. There is an eternal investment resident in this man. And Father, it will be released. It will be a big blessing to the territory that you are sending them. So as a fellowship, as a church, we lift them into your holy hands. And we pray that the favor and the glory of God will surround them. In Jesus' name, they have questions. You will answer those questions. They, this couple, they will not lack. We declare here, you're not going to lack. In the name of Jesus, may the favor of God surround you. In Jesus' name, may doors open for you. Even as you serve the Lord, the Lord will honor you. As the Bible says in John 12, verse 26, If any man serves me, he must follow me. Where I am, my servant must be there. And my Father will honor the men that serve me. May the Lord honor you. May he honor you spiritually with his glorious presence. May he honor you socially. May he honor you financially. May he honor you mentally, emotionally. Every part of you is blessed. You are blessed beyond any curse. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, our Father. We thank you in Jesus' name. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. May his grace be multiplied in your life. May you enjoy his favor every single day. May you walk in the resurrection power, that same power that raised Christ from the dead. May it be at power in your life. May you walk in hope, may you walk in joy, and may you walk in abundance by the promise of the word of God. And now may the grace and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. 
Amen and amen.